Hello and thank you for joining us on The Spin Room. I'm your host, Ami Kaufman. Our three spin doctors today are former Canadian ambassador to Israel, Vivian Berkovic, and joining us from Virginia Beach, the founder of Act for America, Brigitte Gabriel, and very shortly we'll be joined by the uh, founder of the Israeli NGO, The Front, Uri Zaki. Thank you both, meanwhile, for joining us, Brigitte from Virginia Beach, and here in studio, Vivian. Good to see you. Great to be here. Our four topics of discussion today with our esteemed guests are Gaza. After a very tense 48 hours, where is this latest flare-up headed to? Next, we'll discuss an, an attempt by Kuwait to set up international protection for Palestinians. We'll then tackle the recent attempt by Russia to curb Iranian influence in Syria. And we'll end with Roseanne Barr's show taken down by ABC for her racist tweeting. Okay, our first topic is Gaza. It's nearly a war, and it may still become one. For more than 24 hours, starting Tuesday morning, sirens wailed 166 times in southern Israel as Palestinians in the Gaza Strip fired mortars and rockets at Israel. Israel retaliated with two rounds of air raids, hitting dozens of facilities in the Strip belonging to Hamas and the Islamic Jihad. Today, an informal ceasefire brokered by Egypt seems to be holding, but Israel denies any agreement was reached. What does seem to be the case, as an anonymous Israeli official said, is that Israel will hold off the airstrike so long as there are no more projectiles fired from the Strip. This is what Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had to say just a short while ago. The ones responsible for the escalation, inspired by Iran, is the Hamas government, the Islamic Jihad and other terror organizations. I am not going to detail our plans because I don't want the enemy to know what to expect. But one thing is clear to them. If they test us, they pay immediately. If they continue to test us, they'll pay much more. Uh, Brigitte, let's start with you. Uh, what's, what's at stake here? What do the two sides have to lose if this uh, flare-up turns into another, uh, yet another full-scale war? Well, hopefully it will not get to this point, but this is exactly what Hamas is hoping uh, to drag Israel into a full-scale war. Uh, Hamas knows that the United Nations is on its side. They know that the leftist media worldwide is on their side. They know, I mean, look at the pictures that came out of Agence uh, France Press uh, with, the, with the little girls, two little girls crying, standing in front of a door, and a little boy. When I looked at Al Jazeera uh, pictures, again, you know, you see the pictures of the suffering children and wailing mothers. Uh, the Palestinians know exactly how to play the PR war, and they know if they get into a war with Israel, actually that is their best chance to get great publicity for Hamas and against Israel. And they seem to be winning way. that PR war, don't they? Aren't they winning that PR war? Uh, uh, yes, they are winning that PR war. Actually, the Palestinians have perfected the, the writing of rewriting of history, uh, while the Israelis uh, have failed miserably in the PR department. Mm. Uh, again, where are the pictures of Israeli little children who are suffering? Where are the pictures of Israeli little children playing on a playground, hearing the sirens, and having 15 seconds to run to a bomb shelter? I think Israel can do a much better job in getting uh, uh, footage to the outside world. Hamas right now is winning the PR battle. Mm. You know, Vivian, the, 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 the words that many Israelis are using these days towards deja vu, it, it's, it's, is there no other way than to having these flare-ups every other year? Rockets, Israeli reaction. Rockets, Israeli reaction. So it happens every one or one, two years. Yeah, the last big one was four years, the last big volley of rockets. But yes, there have been rockets intermittently. I mean, I, there has to be another way. And I actually think that the only way we're going to see if that's possible is under a Trump or administration or a similar administration. Because for all the critics, for all the criticisms of President Trump and how he uh, conducts his foreign policy, one thing is clear, he's understood in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. He says that you can't go any further, his red lines are respected. Um, but here things are happening all over again. Well, things are do you, have, do you have hope that Trump will actually maybe do something that will make this kind of thing stop? Well, it's not that simple. I mean, we like to oversimplify everything. I want to pick up on some of the points Brigitte was making as well. You know, mm -hmm. how you have all of these photos of, you know, very sad photos of wounded children and mothers and people are in 
serious distress. Uh, and we don't see the same photos because until you see photos of dead Israelis, the world will not be satisfied. They want dead Israeli children. We've entered into two very, very simplistic equations that we apply globally to the Israel-Palestinian conflict. One is somehow there has to be a, a parity between the dead and that, you know, dead equals moral superiority. Mm -hmm. So more Palestinians dead, therefore they're right. The other thing, it's all over social media. I'm on social media from time to time. And it's become so simplified, it's oppressors versus victims. Mm -hmm. And Israel's the oppressor, end of discussion. Right. We have no historical memory, no knowledge. The different way is for someone on the Palestinian side to show responsible leadership. And if it's not going to come from their society, then their Arab brothers and sisters can help them find the way to responsible leadership to stop this nonsense. It all has to ask Brigitte, by the way, to respond to that and, and basically pick it up. Is it all on Hamas' responsibility? Does it, to, can Israel show some leadership as well in this case? Listen, Israel has been trying to show leadership from its inception. Israel has tried to show leadership year after year, decade after decade. Look, Israel had Gaza. Israel didn't have to give Gaza to Hamas. Israel, in good gesture, thought, you know what, we're tired of the war. I think if we give them Gaza, maybe they would leave us in peace. And what did that bring Israel? It brought Israel nothing more than misery. I mean, look what's happening on the Gaza border right now. And, and you know, it's sad. It's like, like uh, Vivian said, you know, we try to oversimplify the conflict. Uh, but you have to understand, until the Arabs learn to love uh, their children more than they hate the Jews, that's when we will Golda. have peace in the Middle East. <laughs> I, I, that's right, Golda. Uh, listen, I was raised in Lebanon. I was born and raised in Lebanon. Yeah. And I can tell you, Muslims feed their children hatred of Israel through their mother's milk. And, you know, and this is continuing. It's even actually getting worse, not better. We see with every generation, the situation is getting worse. And social media is amplifying yeah. how bad the situation is. Because everybody is online 24 hours a day in every language all over the world. Everything is instant. And that's what's making the problem worse. And again, Israel needs to show more. Um, you know, we're living in a world of feelings right now. Everything is about feelings. Everybody wants to feel feelings. And whatever okay. makes you feel bad, that's what you say, oh, we can't let this happen. So Israel needs to make the world feel bad okay. by showing the wailing mothers, by showing the wounded children, or, or, or the fear in children, or children going to psychology in order to cope uh, with what they have. Bomb shelters on the playground. What country in the world has bomb shelters in the playground as a part I of mean, the playground? I, 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 I think I've seen I've seen these pictures. I've seen I, I've seen the pictures in not only in Israeli media but also in international media of uh, Qassams falling in Shderot, of falling in Ashkelon, people running, trying to catch uh, to, to get into shelter. Yeah, I think that though to you know again, it's a body to body equation. Yeah. First of all, picture to picture, you see far fewer. Mm -hmm. All right, so the tally isn't even, um, and you know a lot of the pictures that we get from Gaza, we know are staged because yeah. we've seen footage, um, and we also know that many of the photos from Gaza are from Syria. Mm -hmm. So, but that's that's they, they've used many doctored or photo doctored photos or photos that aren't even from Gaza to mm -hmm. show the misfortune. I don't want to understate the misfortune. But I want to pick up on an important point that Brigitte made, which is, you know, Israel withdrew unilaterally from Gaza. And that becomes a whole other opportunity for the haters to pile on and say, yeah, and you've had blockaded them and they're in an open air prison, you know, and, and comments to that effect. The reality is Hamas had a choice to make mm -hmm. when Israel withdrew. They could have gone in and taken over the greenhouses and all of the economic, um, you know, infrastructure that Israel left intact. They could have worked cooperatively with Israel because God knows their labor and other skills are needed here and they need some of what we have to offer there. They chose not to. They chose to go in. They chose to destroy everything that was left. They chose to divert billions of dollars of funds into a terrorist infrastructure. And they choose to shoot rockets rather than feed their people and fix their homes. If they've chosen to radicalize, there's really nothing Israel can do. If Israel that. doesn't get the quiet that it seeks, do you think, uh, what do you think it should do? Well, right I, you know, I, predictions here, I mean, what should it do? I think that... What will it do? Well, I think right now, one thing I have confidence in is this, this government will adhere to red lines. Okay. They will not let the bombs and the rockets keep coming. They will not let the demonstrations continue. Okay. We have to go for a break. When we come back, more with Brigitte Gabriel and Vivian Berkovich, and hopefully Uri Zaki will join us as well. Stay with us.
In the Holy Land, there are wonders most people never get to see. I-24 News will take you inside the shadows and unravel the secrets of some of the world's most revered sites in a way you've never experienced. All access from every angle. Tune in to Sacred Sites 360, Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on I-24 News. I'm David Schuster. And I'm Shana Stulet. Join us on I-24 News for our show, Crossroads. We bring you a comprehensive and engaging look at the global news and opinions from the crossroads of America. Weeknights beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on I-24 News. with Brigitte Gabrielle, Vivian Berkovich, and now Uri Zaki has joined us in studio, the founder of The Front. Good to have you. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. We were talking about Gaza with our esteemed guest before you came in. I'll ask you some, you know, one or two questions that we asked, uh, uh, I asked uh, Vivian and uh, Brigitte um, that, you know, the word that a lot of Israelis are using today is deja vu, uh, two words, excuse me, if I may be correct. Is there really no other way than having these flare-ups every other year, year and a half, or like the major one was four years ago? Is, is this what we're destined to? I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure it's like, you know, sometimes it seems like the government, the Israeli government is treating the um, uh, constant uh, uh, roles of uh, uh, violence between us and, and Gaza uh, as a seasonal thing. Like, you mm -hmm. know, every few uh, years or so, you have to have something like that in Gaza. I think, um, I'm glad that we're in the end of this. Uh, I, I should say I, I salute this, the, the government and the IDF for not deteriorating the situation and, and handling it, uh, um, you know, in, mm -hmm. a, in a, a moderate manner. Uh, I do think but now, when we avoided, apparently, casualties on both sides, let's go to the roots of the problem. And the roots of the problem is the situation in Gaza that Hamas, in a way, is flourishing mm -hmm. uh, through. And we need to uh, adhere to... Uh, to uh, uh, um, to point our, our uh, uh, attention to what's going on in the humanitarian aspect mm -hmm. of uh, what's going on in Gaza right. and to lift the siege of Gaza. This is a major Israeli interest. That's what the IDF is saying. That's why the, the uh, uh, Israelis living on the border with Gaza are saying mm -hmm. we need to lift the siege of Gaza to let uh, uh, products come in and when there'll be a better situation over there, there'll be less tension. Would you be okay with that? Lifting the siege of Gaza? Well, I think I think everyone agrees on that. That's that's obvious, but you can't lift the siege on Gaza. I don't Gaza. think it is obvious to everyone. I, you can't lift the so-called siege on Gaza when they continue to expound a really hateful ideology that Hamas government calls for the destruction of Israel. This isn't a joke. This isn't some kind of made-up fantasy stuff. We all saw the pictures today so in the okay kindergarten with, where Would you be okay of, of lifting the siege? If, if the rhetoric that, that Vivian is mentioning doesn't change? So what? We are now captives on the rhetoric of Hamas. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And no, we're captives of the terrorists. But, but Vivian, the the, don't listen to me. Listen to Mr. Uh, to, to uh, Major General uh, Eisenkot, who's saying, you know, you need to lift the siege of God. This is the, the chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Force. He's saying, you know, the Israeli military is saying, we need to ease the situation in Gaza and in order to prevent okay. the Hamas from uh, entering Very, very, very quickly, quickly. quickly. I, I, I don't think he means to do it holus bolus with no conditions. I've been, I spend a lot of time at Nahalaz, where I have a lot of friends who live there. They feel the same way, but not with the current government. Okay. So what, you and wait till the overthrow of Hamas, it will never happen, and then we'll have these no, you let seasonal, terrorists come in, these seasonal uh, rounds of, of violence, which hurt the people in Nahalaz. Okay. What's your thought about lifting the siege? Uh, you can't lift the siege because Hamas is going to use it to bring weapons and solidify their position. It's not a matter of, uh, you know, our humans are suffering, our people are suffering, there is no job, 50% unemployment. That is the creation of Hamas itself. Uh, as Vivian mentioned earlier, look, Israel withdrew out of Gaza free and clear and even left them the greenhouses. I know a millionaire from New York who actually gave $14 million for these greenhouses. So as soon as the Palestinians take control of Gaza, they'll have 
industry. They already have clients built in around the world. And what did they do? Destroy them down to the point where they broke the copper faucets and they took them home. Hamas is not interested in the well-being of its population. Hamas is interested in killing its own people to make one political point. And the fact that is Israel cannot exist in the uh, as a Jewish state in the Middle okay. East. And that's Hamas's goal, wiping Israel off the map. Well, in the current state of affairs, where it seems to be kind of ebbing, dying down, this little, uh, this little flare-up that we had now, the two parties do seem to have some kind of shared interest in not going to full S Escalation. Wouldn't it make sense now for Israel and Hamas to maybe directly talk and negotiate, maybe a long-term ceasefire that's been reported recently, and maybe easing a little the siege on the Strip? I mean, I, 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 I hear uh, Brigitte, and you know, uh, I, I, I trust that she, uh, she really wants Israelis to live in uh, security mm -hmm. and well-being, but I somehow trust my uh, military to do that better. And that's the opinion, as you uh, rightly said, the opinion of the leaders of the Israeli military. They say, we need to go into this uh, truth with uh, Hamas. There is an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. And if we won't go there, there's a big, uh, a major threat on Israel. That's the Israeli interest. Okay. Okay. Let's, be the very careful the about, let's be very careful about <laughs> how we represent the views of the Israeli military and policymakers, because I speak to those people as well. <laughs> they, no one is saying, let's, let's uh, end the siege, so-called siege of Gaza, open the border tomorrow, no conditions. That's an absurd notion. Nor do I if, say that. Well, you just said end you the siege. You need to supervise weapons, uh, no, for no, instance. Hang on. I said with conditions, and you're like, no, end the siege. <laughs> I, so I you can't, no, that. you did. Okay, let her wrap it up. So I said with conditions, and you're like, what conditions? We can't turn Hamas into us. What? Minimal conditions. I didn't say that. Minimal <laughs> conditions. It has to be appropriate supervision of all supplies going in and out. We know what they do with dual use materials. Mm -hmm. Things like gasoline kites now, uh, cement, none of that. You're no laughing, kites. but it's not funny. You're laughing, no, no, I'm, but I'm, the cement you're, you're goes You're imagining me. I mean, you're, the, there's no, an I imaginary me here no, that I, supposedly said no conditions. I never said that, for instance. Well, you, of no, course, if if I support what the I IDF stands I disagreed when I said with conditions, so All right. I can, let me, let me I wanna, deduce that you I, mean I, I no conditions. I didn't mean to say that. Okay, uh, guys, I want to move on. We don't have a lot of time. Our next mm -hmm. topic, we're Kuwait. we're just getting revved up. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it up. Don't worry. Kuwait is circulating a watered-down Security Council resolution calling for international protection for Palestinians. The vote is expected this week and Kuwait hopes their version will win European support. European support or not, the vote is still expected to run into a U.S. veto and other countries are also said to have reservations. But that's, not stop, that's not stopping Kuwait from trying to show how isolated Washington is on the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Um, Brigitte, do you agree that the U.S. is isolated in its view of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, kind of siding by itself with Israel? Well, look, America is Israel's staunchest supporter, and America is standing with Israel while the rest of it, the rest of the world is condemning Israel for this, that, and the other. And you're seeing that uh, um, support of the Palestinian cause growth, and particularly in Europe, especially with the rise of Muslims and Arabs flocking into Europe. So mm -hmm. the, the Palestinians have major support on European streets. But... France and England, who have voting power at the United Nations, a veto power, are basically telling Kuwait, "What do you give us more? Give us example. You're asking for a broad resolution. Give us more details on exactly what you mean." And Kuwait is trying to earn brownie points, show itself that it's some type of a leadership, or make some PR point in the Arabic world, and that's why they're calling okay. for that. But again, it goes back to right. Israelis need to show the uh, the effect of. Uh, this war on them. They didn't start this war. This war is affecting them as well. Okay. They want peace. They want solutions. All right, Ori, what do you think of this uh, Kuwaiti proposition? International protection for Palestinians. First of all, before I'll uh, get to that, the usage of uh, the term or, or the verb flocking uh, <laughs> and, and with respect to uh, people, I think it's... Uh, uh, of course, our prime minister used it in order to win the election and then mm -hmm. uh, um, said he's sorry, uh, referring to the Israeli okay. Palestinians uh, in the last elections. Uh, put that aside. Uh, look, I'm, I, I don't think Kuwait uh, is serious about it. They know that the Trump administration would uh, veto uh, something like that. Probably truly so. I mean, this is not the, the right way to, uh, to address the uh, problem. Having said all that, I do think that it does show the isolation of uh, the Trump administration vis-a-vis -vis okay. other members, uh, including Britain and France. Uh, just before, it's not good for Israel. It's not good to, for Israel to totally be dependent on one American administration, not 
you know uh, the whole even the whole country mm -hmm. one American administration it can change rapidly okay 20 seconds and I'll let you wait some I get 20 you. seconds but I'll let you wait some more you, you use the word isolated all the time in referring to America I'm with Churchill not Chamberlain okay so if Churchill's isolated I'm good with that mm -hmm. here's the thing the Kuwaiti resolution or more you know the discussion uh, well, I'll tell you what wait, wait put it oh. down on that and I'll let you finish your sentence when we come back more with Vivian Berkovich Burizaki and Brigitte Gabriel stick around My coffee, Annie? Roku Express. Now 500,000 movies and TV episodes? This is the ultimate streaming adventure. Jack. Oh, great choice. Hey, where's my coffee? Our world is becoming increasingly connected. 6.5 million Wi-Fi enabled devices are now shipping every day. Global consumer internet traffic is growing exponentially with 2.8 billion internet users consuming video at a breathtaking rate. We are creating breakthrough technologies that connect millions of people and billions of devices and securing our place as the most trusted business and technology. We are Eris and we're powering your digital world. I-24 News anywhere, anytime. Download our app. I-24 News. See beyond. What you need to know. The news. Fast and to the point. And the in-depth interviews that will keep you in your seat. From the people that you trust. I-24 News presents The New Rundown. Co-hosted by Nurit Ben and Kalev Ben David. Only on I-24 News. on the spin room with Brigitte Gabriel, Vivian Berkovich, and Uri Zaki. Vivian, please pick it up with the Kuwaiti uh, diplomatic proposition about putting international protection here for Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Yeah, I think that um, the, the whole discussion may run into more resistance than just from the United States. There was, uh, this afternoon, there was a very interesting uh, comment or statement from the German ambassador in Israel. And I think that there are other countries that are starting to see that this is not just because of Israel, and it's not about, you know, again, reducing, you missed mm -hmm. this part, the equation to oppressor versus victim. Right. It's just not that simple. Okay. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. We have a lot of new leaders. My Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, as well, who likes to you know, tell the world that yeah. he's so supportive of Israel, but actually the going's getting a little tough for him right now, uh -huh. and it'll be very interesting to see how he treats this. Okay. Um, but I don't think it's going to be, as you like to put it, America isolated against the whole okay. world. And if I'm isolated against some of those other actors... We're in good You're company. Fine. Okay. Let's Even if on. I'm not American. Okay, we'll move on to our next topic. With the Gaza Strip, the focus of the latest violence and headlines, it's easy to forget even for a day that Syria's vicious, vicious civil war is still raging and Iran is a major player there. The Israeli-Iranian tension in Syria is expected to be the focus of talks. Uh, Israeli Defense Minister Viktor Lieberman will hold in Moscow with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov this week. Recent media reports said Jerusalem and Moscow have reached an understanding that Syrian government troops will be stationed on the Golan Heights, acting as a sort of buffer between Israel and Iranian troops uh, in Syria. Ordi, would you agree that Israel's uh, military actions in the Syria led to a more favorable situation for Israel while also addressing the security threat? I think, first of all, that, that Israel can't afford having the Iranians on its border. This is, I, I think mm -hmm. it's almost a consensus uh, in Israel from uh, both sides of the aisle. Um, Not a good word for Bibi, just for Netanyahu. For border. We have Hamas. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. We're, I'm talking about actual Iran. I'm talking about Iranian forces with Iranian uh, missiles and, and all that. I think that's a, um, a consensus in Israel. Um, I do think that you know uh, uh, military steps needs to be uh, need to be taken sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, always with uh, keeping in mind that you need to uh, uh, do whatever you can 
to prevent escalation, mm -hmm. which with the Iranians can be very dangerous. So far, again, I'm, I'm, yes, the, the prime minister and the military okay. has, have acted in a, a moderate manner. I uh, hope they'll uh, continue doing so. Okay, Brigitte, do you believe Israel will get what it wants near the Syrian border, basically no Iranian presence? Uh, well, Israel is certainly putting the pressure and sending a very unmistakably strong message to Iran that it will not allow Iran to continue building its operation in Syria. Israel understands Iran has 13 military operations in Syria in addition to the glass building by the airport, their major military command center. Mm. So Israel is not going to allow that to happen. And the bombing that Israel did against the Iranians let the Iranians understood that clearly. Okay. Now, that sent a strong message to Assad. He knows that his is going to be destroyed completely if Iran gets into war with Israel, and it's in his best interest to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, Vivian. I, Same question, basically. Will, yeah. will Israel get what it want, wants? I think that the outcome will uh, be acceptable to Israel, really? whether it gets 100% or 80%. But it's pretty clear that the Russians don't want to tango with Israel in the skies over Syria mm -hmm. or Lebanon mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And they take the Israeli uh, military capability very seriously. Yeah. So, you know, in, in some ways, even though it may not look like a great equation for Israel, I actually think Israel has the leverage here. Okay. Have a few minutes left for our last topic. We'll run through it. ABC canceled Roseanne Barr's show after she wrote a tweet in which she likened Barack Obama's top advisor, Valerie Jarrett, who uh, is black, to an ape. We can see right now the uh, tweet there right on your screen. Let's start with you, Vivian. What do you think about this whole uh, ABC Roseanne Barr scandal? I think Roseanne needs some anger management communication coaching. I think it's appalling. This isn't the first sort of, you know, mortifying thing she's said and done, and it won't be the last. <laughs> it won't be the last one. <laughs> no, it won't. Um, having said that, I think that the reaction is really extreme. Too much? Well, I mean, we've come to a point where people say outrageous, inappropriate things, and when they say them on the right, the censure is so extreme. To turn her into this complete pariah mm -hmm. and to shut down the discussion is outrageous. Okay. She did come forward. She said, I'm sorry. She's clearly got a problem. Right. And by the way, the show is fabulous. You, you very, know, I, Brigitte, fabulous. What, what do you think? Too strong a reaction or did she get what she deserved? Uh, I agree with Vivian. It's absolutely too strong of a reaction. I mean, look, we've got people on the left showing pictures of beheading the president, complete disrespect, and nobody did anything to them. If you watch The View in the United States, the disrespect and the name-calling uh, coming from some of the ladies sitting on The View is absolutely appalling, and nobody's doing anything, and nobody canceled them. Mm -hmm. Now, we have taken things to extreme in the United States. You can't disagree with somebody. You don't have to insult them, uh, call them names. That's unacceptable, and that was really unacceptable on the part of Roseanne, but it does not deserve the, the lashback that she got and she is continually getting in the media. Uri Zaki. Look, uh, uh, comparing, uh, you know, black woman to uh, Planet of the Apes, something like that, horrible, horrible. I can't think of many things that can be uh, 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 worse than that. I, I, I want to uh, remind our viewers that, that Roseanne, Bar Roseanne Barr is a big supporter of uh, the Israeli right, of uh, Netanyahu. She got into a bitter fight with the Haaretz uh, TV uh, commentator, uh, Rogel Alfer, uh, a <laughs> couple of months ago. Uh, really a bitter yeah. fight. Really, we should... Uh, these are not the kind of uh, friends we want to have. She's thinking of making Israel. Aliyah, of immigrating to Israel. Oh, you don't, she's you, not making Aliyah. She's not. She but she said, she said, folks home. But she, okay. In Would you want her to make Aliyah? Yeah. Would you want to be in Israel? Exactly. You think she'd be a... Look, first of all, every Jew can make Aliyah. I'm not, you know, this yeah. is part of, of, of what Israel is all about. Okay. Uh, this is not someone I want to represent Israel. Let's put it this way. All right. I think, I think it's important just to, yeah, yeah. The left gets away with, with metaphor, what? with, they get away with murder speech. And Br Brigitte's point is bang on. They say the most outrageous thing. I'm a Zion. I'm an ambassador, okay. and I'm a Zionist well, fascist. Being, all right, to, come on, to Israel because of that. Uh, I'm sorry. That's all the time we okay, have. Okay. I want to thank our panelists, Vivian Berkowitz, Uri Zaki, and Brigitte Gabriel. Thank you very much, guys.